Hi, and welcome to Cryptobiography. I'm your host, Brandon Starr, and this is episode 174, and it is part two of Reverse Image. So we did have a uh, special story that we inserted the last two weeks, so this is going back three episodes ago to 171. And uh, so uh, Jim has discovered this rather unusual ability he has, and he has started to explore it. And here we go. Jim, not having much of anything else to focus on, became obsessed with his image. As the days stretched on, he found, bit by bit, more and more connections that he could make with it. Soon he could ask it to go anywhere in the room at will. And though it could not have any effect on the items in Jim's room, he found that if he closed his eyes, he could tell exactly where his image would be and even control where it was. Then he found himself looking out through his image's eyes. He could see himself sitting on the toilet, lid down and a pillow on top of it to allow him some comfort with his hands over his eyes. If he'd still felt strange before, looking out of the mirror at himself was truly bizarre. He could see himself there on the flowered throw pillow. It was an old one. He refused to use a pillow he slept on up atop his toilet. Head in hands, eyes closed. He opened his eyes and the effect immediately broke. He was sitting on the toilet with the flowered pillow cushioning his seat. His image was looking at him from an angle. Jim knew if he dropped his concentration any further, his image would become a simple image again, mirrored in front of him. As he practiced, he could make the switch faster and faster. Soon he could control it, essentially at will. With a flicker of thought, he would be seeing out of his image's eyes. What he thought would happen if he tried it out of the bathroom? Could he see what was going on in the bathroom? He tried it. First, from the doorway, technically not really away since he could see part of the mirror, but it worked. Then he closed the bathroom door and tried just outside. At first this didn't work, but after trying with the door cracked, then all but shut, then shut, he found he could do it. From there, it was a race. He could do it from across the bedroom. He could do it from across the house. He could do it from the front yard. Soon he could do it from miles away. He also experimented with accuracy. Part of him was thinking this is simply something he was hallucinating, making up. He set his iPad in the bathroom on the counter, but facing the mirror. He tried, and he could easily see it from inside his image. He turned the volume off and put it on YouTube. He found a video and started it. He saw that, as usual, it had two ads in front of it. He left while the first one was playing. He closed the door and had no way of knowing what the second ad would be for or about. He went into his mirror image and watched the ads. The second one came up. It was for an upcoming horror movie. He relaxed and went back into himself, then opened the door and checked the iPad. Sure enough, B-movie splatter was being advertised. Mirror images are made of light. Could he hear? He put the iPad back on and let the video play. He turned up the volume a reasonable amount, but not so well that it would be visible through or audible through closed doors. He swiftly left the bathroom, shut the door, and for good measure left the house and went to the far side from the bathroom. He went into his image and watched. Sure enough, yes, he could hear the video as well. Weird. Again, he had to be sure. It was a video he hadn't watched before, so he waited until he heard a phrase that he was sure he couldn't have accidentally heard before. Like a sock full of melted cheese. Then ran for the bathroom. He backed up the video, and sure enough, they had said, like a sock full of melted cheese. Wow, he thought. But what good was this other than as a cute trick? No one but him ever went in his bathroom. He decided to see if he could see his mirror image in other mirrors and other reflections. He had one other mirror. It was hanging on the inside of his closet door. It had been like that when he moved in. He tried starting from that mirror, and sure enough, he could see out of that one. He went to the bathroom again and closed the door. The bedroom closet mirror was completely shut away from him. He closed his eyes and saw himself in the mirror. He moved himself towards the door. 
He opened the door and looked out. Outside the mirror in the real world, he could see the door was still shut, but here it was open. The world was shaky and almost smoky, but he could see the closet door partly open and went to it. He could look out of it and see his bedroom. He could even see the bathroom door pass, which he was doing whatever this was. And looking out at the mirror in the real world, it wasn't fuzzy. He closed his eyes. He wondered if he could find another mirror to the real world. He looked around the dark, indistinct world. In all directions, mostly far away, he could see little windows. He realized these windows were mirrors and other reflections. He walked to the closest one. It was his neighbor's house. He carefully looked out of the mirror into his neighbor's bathroom. It was empty. He'd never been before in there before in real life, though he believed it was the right one. The style was the right age, the Flowers on the towels matched the style she had on the outside of her house, with flowers on her chair cushions and so on. If she came into her bathroom, he thought, would she see him? It might be hours before anyone came in this bathroom. He could try others nearby, perhaps. He pulled away and looked around for another. Now that he was a bit familiar with the process, he could see that there were other reflective surfaces that he could see through, most of them within his neighbor's house. Looking further out, there were clusters of reflective surfaces further out, apparently massed around other houses. He went around his neighbor's house. There were reflections, large and small, many partly obscured. He looked out of many of them. He realized that any reasonably reflective surface was allowing him to see. However, things like regular plate windows just as their reflections were rather faint, also were hard for hard to see through. Also, many were curved in strange ways, making mostly a strange fisheye effect. These were inside metal cylinders of various kinds. He realized also that he would appear, if visible at all, as a thin strip in those reflections, nearly impossible to see. While the widening of the world was a little hard to get used to, he could generally tell what he was looking at. It was in his neighbor's kitchen that he saw her. He wasn't sure what he was looking out of, perhaps a metal canister. He seemed to be looking out a little above waist height. She was having a meal. The stretching of the view ahead of him made it difficult to tell, but he, she seemed to be having some toast, though it was nearly midday. Jim decided it might be time to test his, his ability with someone outside himself. Perhaps he was somehow fooling himself. If so, he could test it now. He grabbed a mask and went over to his neighbor's house. And that's where the story ends this week. If you have any comments or questions about this episode or previous episodes, cryptobiography at gmail.com or hit us up on Facebook or Twitter. And thanks for listening. Words of Music Copyright 2020 Cryptobiography LLC All Rights Reserved Characters and Events are Fictional, Fictionalized, or Satirical.